Hello, America. Hope you are doing well. I've had a lot of spare time lately, and so I've been watching a lot of YouTube. And YouTube has decided that I am interested in the subject of why civilizations collapse. I'm not sure how this happened. I did watch one video about that, featuring Professor Joseph Tainter. He certainly has some opinions on the subject, and Jared Diamond showed up in my feed also, and some others. Well, let me tell you, it didn't take long for me to realize that they were all wrong. So now I'm all riled up and agitated, and I need to post something on this subject. My main problem was with the remarks of Joseph Tainter because I actually watched one of his videos. Now, Joe fixates on things like the scarcity of resources and energy as reasons for such collapses. And I think that's fair enough as far as it goes. But I think he fails to get to the heart of the subject. I would speak more generally. Civilizations collapse when their rhetorical justifications are abandoned by the public. Now, the reason why the public might lose faith in its own narrative might well be hardship from a lack of resources. But the cause could just as easily be any number of other things, many of them of nothing more than purely symbolic significance. The American Civil War, for example, could well have escalated into a more general collapse of civil order in some alternate history. Yet that conflict was caused by social division over the issue of slavery. Nothing to do with any scarcity of energy or resources at all. The people cannot simply be compelled to accept their civilization's social contract, in other words, not in the long term. They must be persuaded. When the civil power can no longer persuade them, the civil project is abandoned. People are self-interested individuals, is all I'm saying. If they believe their interests are best served by supporting civil authorities, then that's what they'll do. And if they come to believe their best option is to abandon those authorities, then they will do that instead. Civilization itself is the hierarchy that emerges when the common narrative is commonly accepted. Civilization itself is a process, an emergent process. The political leaders who end up in ostensible control of this hierarchy do not exercise the degree of control they are commonly credited with. Nations and civilizations are too big and complicated to be thoroughly controlled by any individual or cadre. What really makes or breaks any leader is their ability or their inability to maintain the credibility of the national narrative in the minds of their people. This is why so much of what politicians do seems to be for show. It is for show. To a large extent, this is all that they can do. Yes, they can and must make some practical decisions from time to time. But they are less like pilots controlling some vast machine than they are like preachers sermonizing to their congregation. Or cheerleaders boosting morale for the boys on the home team. Whatever credit or blame they take for the fate of their nation or their civilization, that fate is ultimately more in the hands of masses of the common people than anyone else. 
because of course it's the common people who decide which politicians are honest and which are self-serving con artists or aspiring dictators. But I digress. I'm sure nobody is too worried about such matters these days. The critical thing for me is to fight for the cause of our liberal queen, Felicia Winters. The galaxy demands it. So if you will excuse me now, I must blow up some more of these enemy spaceships. I will not rest until the Federal Liberal Command has triumphed. Good night and good luck.